show that the equation of g can be written as y is equal to 2 divided by x minus 1 plus 2. We have two functions f of x which is equal to x plus p squared plus q and g of x which is equal to a divided by x plus b plus c and that function g of x is said to be y is equal to 2 divided by x minus 1 plus 2 and that is what we are supposed to show uh, well let's start here g of x is equal to a divided by x plus b plus c as you can see from the format of this function it is a hyperbola right it has a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote is those kind of things that we are going to use to answer this question because we know that for a hyperbola c is your horizontal asymptote while x plus b is equals to zero will give you your vertical asymptote so let's go ahead and find or extract the value of c because we are given the horizontal asymptote so the horizontal asymptote is right here at x is equal to 2 right so that is to say that the value of c on our function g of x is equal to 2 now we just need to find b using the vertical asymptote while under normal circumstances if you're trying to find the vertical asymptote you're gonna say that x plus b is equal to zero and then x will be equals to minus b in this example we have the x value at the vertical asymptote is right here x is equals to one so we're gonna have one being equals to minus b so if we solve for b we're gonna get b being equals to minus one so we have the value of c and we have the value of B. we just need to find a how are we gonna possibly do that in our question statement we are told that the graph g passes through the origin so on the graph g of x on the function g of x we have a point of coordinates 0 and 0 so if we substitute that we're gonna then be able to find the value of a so let's go ahead and do that the y value at this point is equals to 0 and then we have a divided by x plus b x at this point is also equals to 0 while b on the other hand is minus 1 and then plus c which is plus 2 if we take 2 to the other side, we're going to get minus 2 being equals to a divided by minus 1. We know fully well that minus multiplied by minus is positive. So we just have a being equals to 2. Which means that uh, our function g of x is indeed equals to 2 divided by x minus 1 plus 2. Uh, we have the value of a, b and c. Let's move to 4.2. Uh, so the question in 4.2 is saying that let's calculate the coordinates of p. What is p? p is right here. It is the turning point of f of x. But we're given the x value at p because look at this vertical asymptote it goes through p so that tells us that the x at the turning point is equal to 1 now we just need to find the y at the turning point it's the only thing we're left with well our function our function f of x is equal to x plus p squared plus q so in this general format q is your y at the turning point while the p is equal to minus x of the turning point let's go ahead and substitute that before you start feeling bamboozled we're gonna have f of x being equals to x and then we're saying that p is equal to minus x at the turning point we said that x at the turning point is equal to one so we must substitute minus one here everything squared plus q y at the turning point so let's take a point on the graph uh, we can take a a is a point on the graph f if we substitute a we're gonna have a y value and an x value the only thing that we're gonna be left with is q so let's uh, go ahead and do that uh, the y value is 0 and the x value is 5 divided by 2 minus 1 squared plus 
Q. Zero is gonna be equals to nine divided by four plus Q. So Q will be equals to minus nine divided by four. That is to say that the coordinates of P, the coordinates of the turning point, we have one and minus nine divided by four. Let's move to 4.3. Uh, 4.3, write down the equation of the vertical asymptote of P if P of X is equal to G of X minus 1. Let's see what G of X minus 1 is first before we can do anything else. So we know that uh, G of X at this point is definitely equals to 2 divided by x minus 1 plus 2. So g of x minus 1 will be equals to 2. In place of x, we then substitute x minus 1. Right. So we're going to have x minus 1 minus 1 plus 2. So g of x minus 1 is just equals to 2 divided by x minus 2 plus 2. In order to find the vertical asymptote, uh, we have said before that we take the denominator and equate it to 0. So we're going to find we're going to have x minus 2 being equals to 0. So x is equals to 2 will be our vertical asymptote if p of x is equals to g of x minus 1. Why do we equate the denominator to 0? That is because we cannot divide by 0. We're going to have undefined. So that's why we say it is our vertical asymptote. Uh, let's carry on. 4.4 4.4 uh, determine the equation of the axis of symmetry of g in the form y is equal to mx plus c if m is less than zero so we have q equation of axis of symmetry right one equation is y is equal to x plus c another one is y is equal to minus x plus c is it that your gradient is going to be positive one or minus one so here if they say that m is less than zero then we're supposed to use y is equal to minus x plus c so we're gonna have y being equal to minus x plus c so we just need to find the value of c we need to substitute a coordinate here but which coordinate do we substitute you substitute the vertical asymptote in place of x and the horizontal asymptote in place of y so if we go ahead and do that the horizontal asymptote is 2 and the vertical asymptote is 1 plus c so 3 is equal to c and y will be equal to minus x plus 3 and just like that we have our axis of symmetry when m is less than zero let's go ahead and do 4.5 write down the equation of k if k is the reflection of g about the x-axis if it is a, it's a reflection of g about the x-axis then k will be equals to minus g of x that's what uh, a reflection about the x-axis will look like so we have k being equals to minus now we just need to substitute g of x which is 2 divided by x minus 1 plus 2 k will be equals to so we have negative multiplied by positive which will give us negative right so we're going to have negative 2 divided by x minus 1 and then negative multiplied by positive it will give us negative again so we just have minus 2 and just like that we have k k is equal to minus 2 divided by x minus 1 minus 2 the last equation 4.6 for which values of x is f of prime x multiplied by g of x greater than 0 we're looking for the values of x for which the gradient of f of x f prime of x is the gradient the gradient of f of x multiplied by g of x will be greater than zero if you look at the graph and do some analysis you're going to realize that that is true when x is greater than zero our only restriction being that x cannot be minus one